Hi, I'm Steve with Moose Logic, and today we're here to um, provide you an overview of the Zen Desktop components required to build a Zen Desktop environment. And also, I'm going to quickly hit what the optional components are that you can add into a Zen Desktop environment and what those will do for you. Um, and finally, just before we finish, I'm going to quickly go over a, a, a very high level diagram. So, in order to run a Zen Desktop environment, um, the first component, pretty much goes without saying, is, and I didn't list it here for that reason, is Active Directory. You have got to have an Active Directory in place in order to have a Zen desktop environment. Now once you have that, you go to start building your environment, first thing you're going to need is the Desktop Delivery Controller. And the Desktop Delivery Controller, we call it the DDC, is the heart and brains of a Zen desktop environment. Uh, what this does for you is it, it is what when a user goes to ask for a desktop, it is what assigns a desktop to the user. It also um, will keep your desktops, a, a pool of them, up and running based upon what you specify within the desktop delivery controller. So if, for example, at 8 a.m. in the morning you need 25 sitting there ready, that, this will do that. Um, there are settings that allows you to do that. You're going to need something to host your desktops on. Um, Zen Server, vSphere, vSphere or Hyper-V, all um, hypervisors. Uh, you're going to run your virtual machines inside one of those platforms. Uh, many of the server components can also be virtualized in those platforms. It is possible to run uh, physical hardware with, with Zen Desktop, but it, it really defeats the purpose. Uh, however, if you were doing real high-end graphics, um, 3D CAD drawing type graphics, you could use Blade PCs and deliver them via uh, Zen Desktop. Uh, you're going to need a Citrix licensing server. We strongly recommend that you put that on a separate server and you don't run, try to run it on your Citrix um, components. Um, same with Zen App. Uh, and you're going to need some kind of a client workstation with a Zen Desktop agent installed. Uh, you could go thick, which would be basically repurposing existing PCs, or you could go thin with a product such as uh, a Weiss Thin Client. There, there's many manufacturers out there that make um, Zen Desktop Ready uh, appliances. Um, some of the options you have, um, Provisioning Server is one of the big options. And Provisioning Server, what it's going to do for you is it's going to allow you to deliver a gold image to your workstations. Um, the concept here is that everybody gets the same image when they start out the day. Um, if they make changes to it or what have you, when they log off, those changes are, are gone. Uh, unless you add, a, add pro, excuse me, you add products in to manage their profile and hold their user state. Uh, but things, if they tried to install a program or something like that, it's gone at the end of the day. Uh, two things about that. One is you want to use a physical box for your provisioning server. There's a lot of high load on the I.O. on it. Um, and then you're going to need to uh, set up some DHP, DHCP tags or boot P in order to pixie boot your virtual machines. Uh, I strongly recommend you use a separate web interface. The, the DDC will build with a web interface by default, uh, but when you install it, you can choose an option to not put the web interface in there, and we strongly recommend that, that you put a separate web interface in. Uh, of course, you can add Citrix Zen App to the environment. This allows you to publish applications into your virtual desktops, um, which gives you more flexibility. Um, who gets what applications? Uh, you can deliver different applications to different users, but using the same underlying gold desktop image. And finally, I wrote down here redundancy, redundancy, redundancy for the obvious reasons. So. Just real quick on the overall diagram here, you're going to have a client workstation which is going to talk over a LAN or the WAN to your back end side uh, in your data center. Your data center is going to have um, some type of a virtual host. Um, would be better to have more than one so that you have redundancy. Um, also that way you could mi migrate or motion different components as you need to. Um, within the virtual host, we can run the desktop delivery controller, the DDC. Uh, the DDC is a very, um, takes very little load. Um, I've heard um, Citrix say it can handle as many as 10,000 connections a minute. So, um, perfectly fine to run it virtual. Uh, the Citrix licensing server, no problem running it virtual. Um, 
web interface. I put it in blue because it's optional to do it this way. However, uh, strongly, strongly recommend you put it on a, um, on a different box, preferably a dedicated box for a web interface. Again, but virtual. And then all your virtual desktops would also be running in this environment. If you chose to go with provisioning server, it would be, again, optional, hence the reason it's in blue. And it would be a physical box sitting off to the side, connected into your environment, and it would be streaming the bits necessary to run the virtual machines um, off of that box. And provisioning server is a whole uh, deep topic all in itself, and we'll cover that in another one of these, uh, the, these videos. So, real quickly to recap, the main components that are required in a Zen Desktop environment are the Active Directory, the Desktop Delivery Controller, some type of virtual um, platform, Hypervisor, Zen Desktop, I mean, excuse me, Zen Server, vSphere, or Hyper-V, a Citrix license server, and some type of a client machine with the, the uh, Zen Desktop agent installed that's capable of making that connection to the to the back side. So that's it for today. My name is Steve with Moose Logic. Thanks for being with us.